Shabbat Shalom, my Hebrew nation. First and foremost, I would like to give all the praise, the glory, and all the honor to Ahaya, Bahashim, Yeshaya, Wawawa, Barakathon. And I, I greet you and bless you in the name of our Father, Ahaya, the name of the Son, Yeshaya, our Savior, and the Wawawa, the Holy Spirit. And I bless you. This evening's lesson is called Rehearsing the Laws, the Statutes, and the Commandments of the Most High Ahaya. My reader this evening is Deacon Malaak. He will be reading for me this evening. And um, let's go ahead and go into it. This evening's lesson will be, we will be covering how to rehearse the laws, the statutes, and the commandments before going into the wilderness. That's key word, before going into the wilderness and also for the new Jerusalem to come. This lesson consists of three points, so it's going to be broke down into three points. The first point, the laws, the laws are not done away with, so I'm going to be covering that because you have some Christians, well, actually all the majority of these new, the modern-day Christians are taught in these Obama houses that the law is done away with. So we're going to get some precepts and some understanding that the laws are not done away with. And point two, we're going to talk about going under the rock, which, which I'm going to cover that. And what, what that's going to detail is us going into the wilderness and under the law again. And we're going to cover my third point, conclusion of the whole matter. So we're going to be covering three points in this lesson this evening. Now, the reason I call it rehearsing the law, statutes, and the commandments of the Most High is because, to be honest, we're practicing rehearsing. Because if you read the law, you understand that the lamb that was sacrificed had to be perfect. It had to be blameless. So we do not own any stores, no farms. So how would we know the lamb is perfect? How would we know that lamb didn't break a leg? So we're just rehearsing right now until we get into the wilderness where we can see us actually getting the lamb and going through the law and covering that, okay? So there's no Hebrew camp that's doing that 100%. We're practicing and we're rehearsing. All right, my brothers and sisters? Now, we're also going to cover through this lesson, Israel will gain clarity with understanding of the 613 laws and commandments given to Israel by the Most High Ahia. Now, there are, f- there are four categories of the law, which consist of the dietary law, the ceremony law, the moral law, and the civil law. Now, we're going to be covering all, well, I'm going to try to get to two of them, and then the rest of them will fall under the Ten Commandments, which is the um, civil law, and the moral law, those fall under the Ten Commandments. And the other ones, we're going to go through that thoroughly, which is the dietary law and the ceremony law. So we can do that with a thorough study this evening. All right, my brothers and sisters, now, my brothers and sisters, this lesson is for us to stay focused and get so like, and not get distracted by what's going on in the daughter of Babylon. So, I'm also going to talk with us right now of what took place a week ago, or I should say a few days ago, when America passed that law. All right, so this sinful act that was taken by America is an abomination according to the scriptures. America gave a license to practice sin in the earth by passing a law, and that's that um, same-sex marriage law that they just passed recently. Through releasing of a wicked sodomy spirit. Therefore, it is crystal clear that America does not keep the laws, the statutes, and the commandments of the Most High Ahia. It is clear, crystal clear. Also, for all those American citizens who are going alone by supporting this abominable act, you just signed your own death certificate. You have allowed this wicked government to come into your houses and take your sons, your daughters. They can now rape your children right in front of you. Now, I'm saying this, why? Why not? 
because this country has no morals at all any longer once they pass this act. There's no morals in this country no more. The American citizen just voted no more morals. You are saying, basically you're saying, I will not follow the laws of the Most High. Now, you have no foundation to stand on. Anything goes, my brothers and sisters. This, this government can do anything now because there's no morals. So it can do anything they want to the citizens. So those who are in, was in favor of it, those who were supporting on it, don't start crying. Now, you say if you want equality without morals, prepare yourself for this abominable, wicked, perverted spirit you just unleashed, according to Romans chapter 1, verses 29 through 32, into the land. Now, we're going to go into our first opening scripture. So I just wanted to, that was a bonus. I just wanted to keep Israel on top of things so we can know what's, what's happening in the earth. So we all understand now where we at. So our first opening scriptures, we're going into the Apocrypha, and that's in Baruch chapter 4, verse 1. And this is my opening scripture, and that's in the Apocrypha, Baruch chapter 4, verse 1. Book of Baruch, chapter 4. Verse 1, this is the book of the commandments of Ahiah and the law that endureth forever. All they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. Amen. Now, it's crystal clear. Verse, uh, verse 1 of chapter 4, we know that it is the commandments of the Most High and the law that endureth forever. So this is forever. Forever. We do we understand forever. Not just in this life, but the world to come for the thousand year reign and also when the thousand reign year reign is over into eternity with Ahia and Yeshaya forever. So his commandments will endure forever. Now, it goes on and says, And they that keep it shall come to life. Keys, my brothers, the commandments is the keys. And this earth and the earth to come. Life my brothers and sisters, but such as leave it shall die. So if you do not keep the laws, the statutes, and the commandments, you're going to die. Not, on, not only physically, we're going to cover that in the scriptures today, and you're going to die eternity, eternity for the second death as well because the commandments is the keys into the kingdom of heaven. So that's, that's my opening scripture. Now we're going to go into my first point, which is the laws are not done away with. And we're going to get some precepts and some understanding because we are Israel. The oracles are given to us to teach the nations. So we must have understanding and clarity of his laws. So we're going to get some understanding by going through the precepts this evening. So this is a Sabbath day, so relax, sit back, and listen. Get a pen, a pencil, paper, Jot these scriptures and verses down, my brothers and sisters. So we're going, we're going to start off under my first point is Isaiah chapter 28, verses 9 and 10. So that's in the book of Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9 and 10. It's the book of Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Amen. So we see so like so we see in verse nine. Who who shall we teach knowledge? This is the question. And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? So we must understand the knowledge of the commandments and the doctrine. The gospel of Christ. We must understand this. We must have that understanding. Uh, we must, as it goes on, it says, then that are weaned from the milk. So we must get off of the milk. Because when you're dealing with the laws of statutes and commandments, that's the meat of the Most High. So that's what we're, we're going into this evening. And draw from the breast, my brothers and sisters. That's a, 
uh, um, and knowledge. Okay, the Most High said you must get away from the milk, get away from the complaining, not knowing the scriptures. All right, those who've been in the truth for at least a year or so, you must. By now, you should have understanding of the laws, the statutes, and the commandments. All right, go ahead with ten. Verse ten. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. Here a little, and there a little. Amen. So each verse that I bring forward, I'm going to have precepts with it. They're going to fall in line with each other, as the scripture says in verse 10. I'm not going to just break out one scripture and not have a precept behind it. My brothers and sisters, a precept means a verse that lines up with the verse. Because it says, precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line. Line upon line, here a little, and there a little. So throughout the 66 books, throughout the apocalypse of um, different books of the Most High, there's precepts in those books that the Roman Catholic Church and um, the powers that be took those books away from us. So we wouldn't have the understanding. They did that purposely. But now the Most High has, is revealing those precepts to us and these books back to us so we can have that understanding of the Most High's Word. All right? Now, let's go ahead and go into the book of Psalms. Chapter, Psalms 119, verse 104. Once again, we're going into the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 104. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 104. Through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Amen. So, my brother, this evening, when, when you leave from here this evening, you're going to have understanding because the Most High will provide precepts this evening. You're going to have understanding of the law when this evening is over. Through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. So as the scripture says, the only way you're going to get understanding of the laws, the statutes, and the commandments is through precepts. All right, my brothers and sisters? Now, we're going to go into the uh, first time we're going to cover what is sin. Because, once again, the point that I covered, this is the first point. You have people saying, Christians saying the law is done away with. All right, and I'm here to tell you through the scriptures, through precepts, the law is not done away with, and I will provide the precepts this evening. So we're going to go and find out what sin is, because Christians are saying if the law is done away with, guess what, my brothers and sisters, sin is done away with. How can that be? So we're going to look into that. We're going into First John, chapter three, verse four. So this is what. Through thy precepts, I get understanding. So we're going to get understanding this evening. We're going into 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Amen. Now that's crystal clear, my brothers and sisters. So... When you hear a Christian or anybody else talking about the laws done away with, you take them here. Now you have the precepts. How can, how can anybody come up to you and tell you, oh, the most high laws, the Old Testament is no more? Well, hold on. If the Old Testament, the law is done away with, then sin is done away with. That means no one has sinned, and we know that's a lie according to the scriptures. So now we understand that sin means you, you have broken the law. You have transgressed the law of the most high. So now we know what sin is. All right, my brothers and sisters. Now, let's go ahead. We're going into Romans. We're going to get some more understanding, some more precepts. We're going into the book of Romans. And uh, we're going into chapter 6 of Romans, verses 1 through 4. And I pray that you're writing these precepts down, my brothers and sisters, because you are Israel. We are a kingdom of priests, and the priest is to study, and the priest is to know the laws, the statutes, and the commandments. So that's Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. The 
the book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? All right, now, verse right here, Paul, so like right there, Paul is saying to the Romans, or, you know, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? So now we know what sin is. It's not that mystical thing that you hear the Christians say. Um, it's just so broad, sin. You hear them say, oh, we'll forgive you of your sin, just repent. And you're like, what is sin? Is sin? You know, you hear that all the time in the Christian church. We never got clarity because I was in a Christian church for 30 years. I never got clarity on what sin is. I just thought anything that was bad, according to bad, was a sin. No one ever told me that when you broke the law, it's sin. It's a transgression of sin. So we read through the scriptures right here. Now we know what sin is, and now that we know that Christ came to bring grace. All right, we look at verse one. What shall we say then? So we, so like you said, we continue in sin that grace may abound. That's Christ. Christ came to give us grace. Go ahead with two. Verse two. Most high forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin? live any longer therein. All right. Now, we see uh, verse 2, I you forbid. He's letting us know that we must still keep the laws. All right? And grace may abound. All right. Now go ahead with verse 3. Verse 3. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Yeshua HaMashiach were baptized into his death. Go ahead. Verse 4. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Yeshua was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Amen. Now that Christ has came, we look at verse 3. Now that Christ has came, we are to be baptized into Christ, into his death, his resurrection. Then we look at verse 4. Therefore, we are buried with him and baptism, all right, and to death. Now, we must walk in Christ as well through grace. Now, when Christ was on the earth, you have scriptures. Throughout, throughout the um, word, Christ kept the law. Yeshua kept the law. And we're going to cover that as well when he was on earth. He kept the, the ceremony laws. He kept all the commandments, my brothers and sisters, while Christ was on earth. So the law is not done away with, and here's the precepts to prove it, all right? Now, we're going to get some more precepts. We're standing in the book of Romans, and we're going to go to chapter 7. We're going to cover verses 7 and 12. We're going to get some more precepts so that you have that understanding without a shadow of a doubt that you know that we are to keep the laws once we're in Christ. The laws are not done away with, my brothers and sisters. Christ did not do away with the laws. The only law that he done away with was the the, the sacrificial law, okay, that Israel had to do once a year that to atone for sin. So that's Christ, Christ is the, the lamb of Ahia. We must understand that. And that was to be forgiven for all our sins, once and for all, to receive Christ's Yeshua. That's the only law that was done away with. All right, my brothers and sisters, that's the sacrificial law that's done away with. Christ did that, okay? Now, we're going into the book of Romans, chapter 7. We're going to cover verses 7 and 12. The book of Romans, chapter 7, verse 7. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Most high forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust. Except the, except the law had said, thou shalt not covet. Amen. My brothers and sisters, verse 7, Paul is asking the Romans again, what shall we say then? Is the law sin? I had you forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. So that's why I don't believe what someone says. Go to the scriptures. Prove it. This is how you get your understanding through precepts. You can't go by what somebody says. You got these, these false pastors talking about the law is done away with, and the, the, 
And Israel's just believing them because they're not testing the spirit. They're not trying the spirit. They're just going along with it because he's in authority position. They believe anything that person says. And the scripture is telling you right here, the law is not done away with. We have not known sin unless the law. This is what the scripture is saying right here. For I had not known lust except the law had said, thou shalt not cut it. So this is crystal clear. The law is not done away with. We are still to keep the laws, the statutes, and the commandments. Go ahead. To, let's get down to verse 12. And we're going to understand, because you also hear in the Christian church, oh, you must be holy. You know, um, they always, you hear that word used loosely in the Christian church, holy. Holier than thou, a holy roller. And, and, and there's no understanding or no precepts with the word holy. So now we, you're going to have understanding this evening of what holy is. Go ahead with verse 12. Verse 12, wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. Amen. So now we understand what's holy, my brothers and sisters. That person is not holy. The law, the Most High's laws is holy. His laws, statutes, and the commandments are holy. Let's, let's look at that, verse 12. Wherefore, the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just and good. So from now on, holy also means set apart. So for you to get understand, you can look up that word holy. It means set apart. It also breaks it down in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. Holy means set apart. So we are Israel. We are set apart also to the Most High, to be holy. And what is holy? The law. How do we become holy? By keeping the laws, the statutes, and the commandments. That's what makes us holy when we do that. My brothers and sisters, the action that takes place when we keep his laws in our heart and in our minds and in our soul. All right. I'll pray to the Most High Highly. So let's continue on with some more precepts. We're going into the book First Peter. And I pray that you're writing it down, my brothers and sisters. And we're going into First Peter chapter 1, verses 13 through 16. We're going to get some more understanding of um, the law, that the law is not done away with, my brothers and sisters. That's First Peter chapter 1, verses 13 through 16. First Peter chapter 1, verse 13. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Now, my brothers and sisters, we see, we must brace, you must brace up your minds. We must be sober, morally alert, because morally, pay attention to that word, morally alert, my brothers and sisters, because you see this wicked nation, the daughter of Babylon, a.k.a. America, just took more morals out of the land when they, when they gave a license to uh, practice sodomy in this land. There's no more morals now. So pay attention to that. Set your hope holy. Now, what, also what this verse is talking about is hope holy and unchangeable are the grace, the, the divine favor. You must pay attention and realize that it is grace and divine favor of Christ. All right, that the coming of the Messiah and his reveal. So we must be alert and be ready when Christ comes, my brothers and sisters. All right, now go ahead with 14 now. Verse 14, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. Verse 15, but as he which hath called you is holy, so... So be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Verse 16, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Amen. Now, you must look at verse 14. You must be obedient. as You must live as obedience until a higher. All right, my brothers and sisters, verse 14. And we must not conform yourselves to the evil desires that's in this world or that's in this government, according to verse 14. 
and your former ignorance when you did not know the requirements of the gospel. So before you came into the truth, you can't no longer go into that ignorance. And we must stay in the gospel and get his understanding. Okay, the gospel means the good news of Christ. All right, verse 13, verse 15. But as the one who called, so we must understand that a high is holy. So we must be holy. All right, we must conduct ourselves in a matter in verse 14. So like in verse 15 of living, my brothers and sisters. We must walk in the laws, the statutes, and the commandments. We are a kingdom of priests, and we must preach society to the nations by keeping the laws, statutes, and the commandments. All right? Holy, once again, holy means set apart. Verse 16, for it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. All right. And let's continue on. We're going to get some more precepts. We're going to Matthew. We're going to see that Christ kept the laws. We're going to see that Christ did not destroy the laws. We're going to the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17 through 19. We're going to get some more understanding, my brothers and sisters. We're going to Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17 through 19. And this is Christ speaking. This is the Messiah, Yeshua, speaking. Go ahead. St. Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Amen. Verse 17. Crystal clear, my brothers and sisters. Christ, this came out of Christ's mouth. He did not come to destroy the law in verse 17, my brothers and sisters. And what is the law? Now we know what the law. The law is the, the most high. It's to keep the laws, the statutes, and the commandments. Christ did not come to destroy that. Or the prophets and what the prophets prophesied. All right? Christ didn't come to destroy that. All right? It goes on and says, I, Christ says, I have not come to destroy, but to fulfill. So, my brothers and sisters, Christ is the lamb of Ahijah, that sacrificial lamb. So we needed Christ to forgive Israel once and for all. They're saying you can now have eternity through Christ and keeping the laws, the statutes, and the commandments. But we must receive Christ first and still walk in it, as the scripture says. But to fulfill, that means we're going to continue to walk in the laws, the statutes, and the commandments. Go ahead with verse 18. Verse 18. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Now, do we understand that, my brothers and sisters? Nothing, the law is going to stay here. The law will be here forever. And we read that in Baruch, chapter 4, verse 1. So the commandment said it will endure forever. So all things must come to pass in the law. To all be fulfilled, my brother and sister. That Christ was saying, to all be fulfilled. We are still to continue. So when you hear Christian pastors, Christians talk about, oh, I got grace. I can sin and do what I want. Christ is going to forgive me. No, nah, my brother and sisters. You must continue. Once you receive Christ, you must continue to walk in the laws, the statutes, and the commandments. Yes, you do have grace. But as we just read in the scriptures, it's not a license. To sin. Grace is not a license to sin, my brothers and sisters. All right, go ahead with 19. Verse 19. Whosoever, therefore, shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. All right, so my brothers and sisters, crystal clear. You got these Christian pastors that says right here, whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so. So you have these Christian churches telling you the law is done away with. You can break the commandments. This is what they're saying. This is what the scripture says. They will be the least. He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. You hear that, my brothers and sisters? Now, if they do not die and they sin, and somehow the Most High gave them grace, to repent and get right, hey, you, you, 
The scripture says they would be the, they would make it into heaven, but they'd be the least. You must understand that. Now it goes on and says, but whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great as the kingdom of a higher. Now see, this is what precepts precepts come to understand it. Through that precepts, I get understanding as the scripture says. So now you know those who are teaching the laws, the statutes, and the commandments will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. This is what your side is saying. So the law is not done away with, my brothers and sisters. All right. We're going to get some more precepts. I know I'm, I'm, I'm giving us a lot of precepts, but this is very important. Our foundation must be without a shadow of a doubt because Satan will come in and try to pull your foundation out. We're trying to pull the word out. So the more precepts you have, the more you can stand on his word. My brothers and sisters, that's why, that's why I'm giving Israel a lot of precepts, because we must stand on his word, because Satan will attack you and say, y'all, the law is not nothing. You can still sin. You know, you're going to hear this coming at you, but now you're going to have precepts and understand it. You don't have a foundation to stand, and you have clarity now. So let's go ahead. We're going to go into Matthew. We're standing in the book of Matthew, chapter 22, verses 36 through 40. We're staying in Matthew, going into chapter 22, verses 36 through 40. St. Matthew, chapter 22, verse 36. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Verse 37. Yeshua said unto him, Thou shalt love the Most High thy power with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Verse 38, this is the first and great commandment. Verse 39, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Verse 40, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, let's, let's get some understanding. Now, this... This, I believe this was a, a lawyer that tried to trip Yeshaya up. So you must be prepared because you're going to have Christians and you're going to have um, unbelievers coming to you to try to trip you up on the word. Now, this person tried to ask Yeshaya, which is the greatest commandment? And we know that all his law is great. You must understand that. Everything that we are to keep is honorable and great in the Most High's law. All right? But this this one this person tried to trip Yeshua up and he knew that and so what he did what Yeshua did was we look at verse thirty seven thou shalt love the Lord thy power with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind now if you look at the Ten Commandments the first five has to do if you let me go to let me look at that real quick the first Ten Commandments. And you look at that, let's see what it talks about. Let me get it for you real quick. Thou shalt not have no other gods before me. All right? Then it goes on and says, Thou shalt not make any garbage images. Now, all these, it says, Thou shalt now bow down unto thyself or worship any other god because he's a jealous god. So the first five has to do with love the Lord. So you love the Lord with all thy soul and all thy mind. And all that heart, you don't have to worry about breaking none of those the first five commandments. So Yeshua is using wisdom and understanding on how to answer this man's uh, trick question. Because this is exactly what he tried to do. He tried to trip Yeshua up. Now let's go ahead and look at that was the first great commandment. Let me look at verse thirty-eight. This is the first and great commandment. Let's look at thirty-nine. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So if you look at the rest, five of the, the five of the commandments at the end, it goes on and talks about thou shalt not kill, steal, you know, things like that. So you look at the second, the greatest commandment that Yeshua said is love thy neighbor as thyself. So if you love your neighbor as thyself, you're not going to break the, the, those five. The ones five through ten. You're not going to do that because you're going to love thy neighbor as thyself. So 
Yeshua answered that question. So we look at verse 40. On these two commandments hang the law and the prophets. So this is understanding that we must have. They're not going to teach you this in the church, my brothers and sisters. So this is Yeshua speaking. He did not say the law is done away with when he said on these two new commandments. He went on and said, and these two commandments hang all the law. So we look at the first one in verse 37 is the first part, and the second is that second commandment, love thy neighbor as thyself. So Christ covered it all. All right, now, let's go to the book of John. And I pray that, my brothers and sisters, that you're getting understanding this evening. You're getting that foundation that the law is not done away with. So we're going into the book of John, chapter 14, verse 15. St. John, chapter 14, verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. It's crystal clear. We say we love Christ. We love the Shia. Christ said keep his commandments. Verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. Crystal clear. All right. We're going to go to 1 John, chapter 2, verses 1 through 6. We're going to get some more precepts. That's 1 John, chapter 2, verse 1 through 6. 1 John, chapter 2, verse 1. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Yeshua HaMashiach, the righteous. All right, my brothers and sisters, now, we, earlier we understand what sin means. So when you see sin and the precepts are in the verses, you understand sin means transgression of the law. Always remember that now. So the scripture says, verse 1, my little children, these things write I unto you. Now, you're trying to speak to Israel, my brothers and sisters, and we're gonna, I'm going to bring that out, and you're going to see that further on throughout the verses right here. So it says, my little children, which is Israel, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not, which is do not transgress the law. And if any man transgress the law, we talk about sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Yeshua Christ, the righteous. Go ahead with verse 2. Verse 2. And he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. All right. Now, my brothers and sisters, this is what I was talking about when I said Christ was speaking to Israel. Now, you look at right here, verse 2, and he is the preparation for our transgressions of the law, which is sin, and not for ours only. Now, he's talking about Israel. And not for ours only, but also for the sins also for the transgressors of the law of the whole world. Now he's talking about the other nations, my brothers and sisters. This is the understanding. Go ahead with verse 3. Verse 3, And hereby we do know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. Now, crystal clear, verse 3, And hereby we do know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. So all those Christian, modern-day Christians that go to these abominable church houses on Sunday, that they're breaking the laws and they're not keeping the laws, they're doing that on certain Sunday, first of all, because they're, not, they're going into um, Sunday worship. They're worshiping, worshiping another false god on a Sunday. They're breaking the commandments. Right here it tells you, Crystal Clear, that we do know that they keep his commandments. If, you, if Christ is in you, you're going to keep his commandments. Go ahead with verse 4. Verse 4. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Go ahead. Verse 5. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of a higher perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. 
Verse 6. Go ahead. He that saith, he abideth in him uh, himself also, so to walk, even as he walked. Amen. Now, verse 4. It's, this is the precept. This is the understanding, my brothers and sisters. This is that foundation. Now, you, you would never, you do not let any spirit tell you that the law is done away with. And, and if they talk about the law is done away with, Christ is not in them. And now you have the precepts and understanding. Verse 4, he that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar. This is what the scripture says, my brothers and sisters. And the truth is not in him. There's no truth in that person. Verse 5, but whoso keepeth his word, which is the law, the statutes, and the commandments, and here verily is the love of a higher perfected. Hereby, the scripture says, hereby know we that we are in him. So if you're keeping the law, the statutes, and the commandments, you receive your side of Christ is in you, my brothers and sisters. He dwelleth in you. According to scriptures, he dwelleth in you. All right? Now, verse 6 says, He that saith, he abideth in him of himself also so to walk, even as he walked. So we must be as Christ did. He kept the laws, the statutes, and the commandments. And that's all we are to imitate. That's all we are to follow, as the scripture says. Now, we're going to get um, one more precept under the laws not done away with, is, which is my first point. We're going into 1 John. We're staying in 1 John. We're going to go to chapter 5, verses 1 through 3. So, yes, this evening, my brothers and sisters, we're getting some understanding. We're going to dissect his, the Most High's law, statutes, and commandments this evening. All right. We're going into 1 John, chapter 5, uh, verses 1 through 3. First John, chapter 5, verse 1. Whosoever believeth that Yeshia is Hamashiach is born of Ahia. And everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. Verse 2. By this we know that we love the children of Ahia. When we love Ahia and keep his commandments, Verse 3, for this is the love of Ahia, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. Amen. So, crystal clear. Let's look at verse 2. By this, we know that we love the children of Ahia, but we love Ahia and keep his commandments. So this is, what, this is the definition of love, my brothers and sisters. You hear this word always talking about love. You're supposed to love. You know, which is true. But this is the definition of love is by keeping his commandments. This is love, according to Ahia's word, according to the laws, the statutes, and the commandments of the Most High Ahia. This is love, my brothers and sisters. Let me read that again in verse 2. By this we know that we love the children of Ahia when we love Ahia and keep his commandments. Verse 3. For this is the love of Ahia. So this is love. So we hear Christians talk about, oh, um, don't judge the, the sodomite right here because you're supposed to love them. That's not love, my brothers and sisters. This is love, according to the scriptures. That we keep his commandments. I mean, verse 3, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. So this is love, my brothers and sisters, by keeping the commandments. This is the love of Ahia, by keeping his words. And it's not grievous. It's not going to be so hard. It's not going because he's going to put his word in you. Um, brothers and sisters, I used to eat um, crab, lobster, all that for 37 years. But when Christ put his word in me, he came to tell me with the truth. I had no problem. I kept it. You know, um, he has delivered me from that. He has given me that grace to sustain. He's put his word in me. And it's not grievous. It's not hard. And I struggled with that for 30 years. I dealt with that. But once I come, I came into the truth, he gave me grace and mercy and endurance. 
and he put his word in my heart to love him and his word. So it's not grievous, my brothers and sisters, to keep the laws and statutes and his commandments. Now, that was the first part of this lesson, the first point, point one, which is the law is not done away with. And we now we have understanding. So let's go on to my second point, and we're going to cover going under the rod. This is, this is the, um, the second point of my lesson, going under the rod. And once again, my brother and sister, this lesson is called Rehearsing the Law, the Statutes, and the Commandments of the Most High are higher. All right, now, we're going to go ahead and go to, let me find it real quick, my brothers and sisters. The second point, and it's going under the rod, we're going into Ezekiel, chapter 20, verses 33 through 38. We're going to get some understanding of going into the wilderness, my brothers and sisters. These are the wilderness that we're going into. And we're going to cover that in Ezekiel, and that will have some precepts for the wilderness. Because this is why the Most High put his spirit in me this evening, so we can go over the laws of statutes and commandments, because we're going to be rehearsing that and going into the wilderness. And this is why we're going over it now. So that's Ezekiel chapter 20, verses 33 through 38, my brothers and sisters. This is the book of Ezekiel. Chapter 20, verse 33. As I live, saith the Most High Power, surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out will I rule over you. Verse 34. Okay. And I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries wherein ye are scattered with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out. Verse 35, And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people, and there will I plead with you face to face. Verse 36, Like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so will I plead with you, saith the Most High Power. Verse 37, And I will cause you to pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bonds of the covenant. Verse 38. Okay. And I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me. I will bring them forth out of the country wherein they sojourn. And they shall not enter into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Most High. All right. Amen. Now, we understand what the wilderness is. And we're gonna, I'm going to give you precepts. But I'm going to go, go ahead and jump down to verse 35, and it says, I will bring you into the wilderness. This is future prophecy, my brothers and sisters. I will bring you into the wilderness of the people, and there I will plead with you face to face. Verse 36, like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so will I plead with you, said the Most High Ahia. Now, we're going back into the wilderness, my brothers and sisters. Once the daughter of Babylon is destroyed, we're going to be in the wilderness already. He's going to get us out, out of um, America. He's going to bring us into through his spirit. We're going to be obedient. Some is leaving because it says deliver thyself, according to Scripture as well. And um, the most is, is going to get us out of here. We just have to be obedient to the spirit and stay in the spirit, just like the angels came and got Lot out. My brothers and sisters, Lot took heed, and he left with the angels. The angels guided him out. And I believe that the Most High would do that for us. We prepare ourselves and be ready. He would send his angels, his holy angels, to get us out of, the, of America. We just have to be circumcise our ears and listen. Now, let's go ahead. So just like our forefathers went through that in the wilderness, that wilderness was only supposed, that was a Persian period. My brothers and sisters, just as well as our forefathers was purged in the wilderness, so shall we. Now, that wilderness was only to last for 11 days. But because of hardness and disobedience, it lasted 40 years, my brothers and sisters. Because they was rebellious and they didn't want to take heed. 
They didn't want to keep the laws and the statutes and the commandments in the wilderness as well. And they died in the wilderness, some of our forefathers. Now, we're going to go through the same thing. All these Hebrew camps, all the other nations, go to the other nations in the wilderness with Israel as well. You're going to see that in the precepts when I give that to you. It's just not going to be Israel. There's going to be other nations in the wilderness with us as well. Those who keep the laws and statutes and the commandments, they're going to be there with us as well. Now, we look at verse 37. And I will cause you to pass under the rod. Now, I'm going to give us precepts with that, pass under the rod. That means we're going back. We're going under the rod, which was going under. If you broke the law, judgment is set. You would be dealt with. So if there's any sodomy going on in the wilderness, the most high is going to strike those down that's going to be in the wilderness right there. So that's what it talks about passing under the rod. And now we're bringing you into the bond of the covenant. We're going back under the law, my brothers and sisters. All right, verse 38. And I will purge out from among you the rebels. So this is the purging period. Just like our forefathers went through, we're going to go through a purging period. That's why we're rehearsing the laws now. So we're going to cover, most of our women that I have time, we'll be able to cover the dietary law. We'll be able to cover the ceremony law. Because when we get into the wilderness, we're going to have to apply this. Those judgment is going to be set. You can't, you, we're going to cover that as well. There's going to be some that's in the wilderness that's not going to keep the laws of statutes and commandments, and judgment is going to be set. They're going to get killed right there on the spot. Not by man. The Most High is going to kill them. Judgment is he's going to send his holy angels to strike that individual down right then and there. We look at verse 38, and I will purge out from among you the rebels and that transgress against me. So what is transgress? We just read that. Sin is the transgression of the law. All right, my brothers and sisters. All right, now, let's look at it. It says, I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn, because we're coming out of Babylon, and where were we at throughout the four corners of the earth, Israel? And they shall not enter into the land of Israel, and you shall not, shall not and you shall know that I am the most high. All right. So this is what's going to happen. That's why we're, this lesson, the most I put this in my spirit, to give to Israel so we can rehearse and practice the laws and have understanding of the laws, statutes, and the commandments. Now, I'm going to give you those precepts. Um, do for time. I'm going to write, go ahead and write, write these precepts down. Um, Psalms 80. Well, I see, I'm, going to, let's take, I'm going to take my time. Go ahead. Right, we're going to go into the book of Psalms, chapter 89. Verses 30 through 34. So we're, we're, we're going to take our time this evening, our brothers and sisters. We're going to get some clarity and understanding. So these are the precepts of under the rod. What, what does it mean by past under the rod? We're going to get the precepts for that. And the purging out from among you, the rebels. And then that transgress against me. So that's Psalms 80. We're going to look at verses 30 through 34. The book of Psalms, chapter 89, verse 30. If his children forsake my law and walk not in my judgment, verse 31. If they break my statute and keep not my commandments, verse 32. Then will I visit their transgression with the rod and their iniquity with stripes. Verse 33. Nevertheless, my loving kindness will I not utterly take from him, nor suffer my faithfulness to fail. Verse 34, my covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that has gone out of my lips. All right, oh, amen. Now we look at verse 32. Now this is the, the precepts. We went through that precepts, I could understand it. So what does it mean in Ezekiel when it says pass under the rod? Let's look at verse 32. Then will I visit their transgressions with the rod and their iniquity stripes. So this is what it talks about. We're going under the, law, the rod, which is the law. We're going back under the law. And let's look at verse 34. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is going out of my lips. So we must understand. The Most High's word 
will come to pass. We're going under the rod once we get into the wilderness. Let's get another precept for that. We're going into Leviticus, the book of Leviticus. I pray that my brothers and sisters have a pen and a pencil and write these precepts down because you're going to need this when you go into the wilderness. Leviticus chapter 27, verse 32. The book of Leviticus, chapter 27, verse 32. And concerning the tithe of the herd or of the flock, even of whatsoever passeth under the rod, the tenth shall be unto unto the most high. Amen. Crystal clear, my brothers. These are the precepts. All right. Verse 32. And concerning the tithe of the herd or of the flock, even of whatsoever passes under the rod, the tent shall be holy unto the Lord. This is the Persian that is talking about. This is the precepts for that. When it says right here in verse 38, and I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me. So that's the tent. That's that holy. That's, these people are going to be purged out. And what's left? Is the holy that was the tent? Those are just going to be that's going to be left. Let's look at that again, verse thirty-two. And concerning the tent of the herd, or of the flock, even of whatsoever passes under the rock, the tent shall be holy unto the Lord. Now we have understanding of what's going to happen while we're in the wilderness. We're going to be purged, and those who do not keep the law, statutes, and commandments, they're going to be dealt with. Under the rod, right there, and we're going to look at we're going to we're going to get a, a live a testimony of that occurrence that took place. That it was a we're going to look at that. Let's go to that uh, Isaiah. And we're going to see what happens to the individual once we get into the wilderness or make it to the wilderness. There's going to be people that's going to be purged, and they're going to, they're still going to carry on with the things that they did in these abominable houses, which is these modern-day Christian churches. And they're still going to be eating pork, crab, lobster, strand, um, sodomy. So, hey, it's going to, some people still going to, it's bound in sin. So they're still going to be carrying those acts, and the Most High is going to deal with them right there on the spot. Isaiah 66, verse 17 through 18. We're going to get a testimony of that. That's the book of Isaiah Chapter 60, 15 through 18. Isaiah, chapter 66, verse 17. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh and the abomination and the mouth shall be consumed together, saith the Most High. Now, my brothers and sisters, we see that. Crystal clear, what's going to happen? The Most High is going to consume them together. That abomination. It tells you right here. It's, it was a man. Let's look at uh, 17. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst. Now, what that's talking about is they attempting to sanctify themselves. They're still practicing those acts. Okay? Which means they're going to be cooking the, the swine and doing whatever witchcraft thing that they were doing in the world. They're going to try to bring this into the wilderness and cleanse themselves to enter. They're going to be, sac- sac- they're going to be making sacrifices to their idols in the garden. They're going to be um, following after one in the midst, all right? And they're going to be eating hog's flesh and abomination, creeping things. Those creeping things, that that crab, that lobster, that shrimp, they're still going to be practicing that. All right, they're still going to be eating dogs. They're still going to be eating mouses. These are the, these are abominable, abominable actions to the Most High. These things we cannot eat. And the Most High said he's going to consume them all together, as the Scripture says. Go ahead with verse 18. Verse 18. For I know their work and their thoughts. It shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues and they shall come and see my glory. All right. So this is is a live account of what's going to happen to those who 
still want to sin, which is transgression of the law. The most I was going to deal with them right there. It was one eating flesh. I mean, it's like it. It was one eating pork behind the tree. The most I consumed that person right there and that, and that hog, that pork, on the spot. So now we see, my brothers and sisters, why it's important for us to have understanding, have precepts on the laws. Because how are we going to teach the nations if we don't have understanding of the laws, statutes, and the commandments? All right? And the precepts for the wilderness, you can write this down, in Zechariah chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. And then also the Apocalypse in Second Baruch, chapter 24 through, through 30, verses 2 through 5, which are the precepts for the wilderness. So you can have understanding that we will be going into the wilderness, my brothers and sisters. And we are to leave the daughter of Babylon, which is America, to deliver thyself. All right. So these are the precepts that we're going to be in the wilderness. Because you cannot go by, like I said earlier, you do not follow any man. You do not go by what someone says without precepts and understanding. All right, my brothers and sisters, you must have precepts. You must have understanding. Because you hear the Christian church and say, you'll be caught up with the scriptures in, in, in Thessalonians. Talks about being caught in the twinkling of an eye when your Messiah comes, and he is, and that our body is going to be transformed into um, incorruptible, which is true. But they don't tell you that there's precepts, there's a wilderness before that, and they don't give you the precepts for that. So now you have understanding because it's our job to teach the nations and to correct the nations because they're they're teaching false doctrines. This. This modern-day Christianity is teaching false doctrines throughout the earth. And it's our job as Israel to bring the gospel of Josiah to Christ, to bring the truth. All right? So those are the precepts for the wilderness. Now, we're going to go with the, um, the second point, which is under the rod. And now we're going to go into the commandments. We're going into Exodus chapter 20. And we're going to cover verses 1 through 17. And we're going to dissect his understanding. Understand now, the Ten Commandments, we're going to, which, which covers the civil law and the moral law. Now, on your own, you can go ahead and look this up, but I'm going to go over through the Ten Commandments, and you can study this. The civil law is in Exodus chapter 21. So you can read that on your own and get some understanding. All right, my brothers and sisters, because when you break the Ten Commandments, that's why the Most High gave us the Ten Commandments, so we can have understanding. We do the Ten Commandments, we don't have to worry about the civil law and the moral law. Because these other commandments of the civil law is if you broke the law of the Ten Commandments, it tells you, it gives you the process of it, what to do. This is what the civil law is for. And also, if you broke a moral law, which are the command, the Ten Commandments, this is the process of you breaking the Ten Commandments. So you don't have to worry about the civil law and the moral laws. You just keep the Ten, my brothers and sisters. If we keep the Ten, we don't have to go through the, um, the moral law or the civil law. But it's good to know it. In case the law do break the law, we, you can teach them. So the civil law is in Exodus chapter 21, and the moral laws, is in Leviticus chapter 19. All right, now, let's get Exodus chapter 20. We're going to start out at verse 1. We're going to go to verse 17, and we're going to get understanding of the Ten Commandments. Go ahead, Al. Exodus chapter 20, verse 1. And the Most High spake all these words, saying, verse 2, I am Ahia thy power which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Verse 3, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Verse 4, All right. Thou sh oh, shall, I can, shall I can write that out? All right, now, we see, Thou shalt not have no other gods before me. So we understand this is the first commandment. All right. Go ahead, uh, verse 4. Verse 4, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image 
or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Amen. Now, verse 3 and 4, we are not to have any images or any no other gods before Israel, period. We are, we are only to worship the Most High, our higher, our brothers and sisters. All right, go ahead, up. verse 5. Verse 5, thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Most High, thy power, am a jealous power, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Verse 6, okay. and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me, and keep my commandments. Amen. Now, that's, I, that's why I trip off these other nations, and they, they think they're getting away with their saying that they did to Israel. It's crystal clear right here in the, um, the, book, the book of Exodus. Verse 5, for I, the Most High, thy power, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So this is why the daughter of Babylon will be destroyed, because their fathers, which is Esau, took us into slavery and killed. So that sin is, will be visited upon them. This is why the daughter of Babylon, a.k.a. America, will be destroyed. They thought they were free. They thought they seen was going to be free. That's, that goes for any, any other nations that did Israel in. And they thought they got away with it. Nah, it's coming to their seed. The most I said, I will visit their seed, their children, to the third and fourth generation. All right. Go ahead out with... Um, Verse 7. Verse 7. Thou shalt not take the name of the Most High thy power in vain, for the Most High will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. All right. So we know this is another um, commandment, part of the ten as well. So we understand vain. What does vain mean? You know, when you, when you speak of the Most High, you must speak life. When you mention his name, you speak life. That's why I always say I give praise and glory and honor to the Most High Ahijah. I just don't say his name in vain. I speak life. Vain means you're not giving it life. It's your death. You're speaking death with vain means. There's no life in it. So the Most High said, do not say my name in vain. So when you say his name, you speak life. Always. All right, go ahead, Ark, with 8. Verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Verse 9. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. Verse 10. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Most High thy power. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gate. Verse 11. For in six days the Most High made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day, wherefore the Most High blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Amen. Now we see this is another commandment, other ten. Remember the Sabbath day, to keep it holy. What is the Sabbath day? The Sabbath day is today. This is the Sabbath day. Verse 9, six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. So that's six days. So that's what? Let's look at because. This this um, Babylon calendar is all messed up, but the days are still the same. You can understand the days. So we look at six days. The first day is Sunday. So you count down. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So on Saturday. So on that six days until Friday, we rest. On that, I mean, so like on that seventh day, we rest. And we know according to the Hebrew um, custom or the culture, we know when the sun um Goes down, we measure by the moon and the sun. That's how Israel, we don't go by 12 noon and um, 12 midnight. That's the, uh, the Gentiles' way of telling time, and it's incorrect. We are to go by the sun and, and the moon, as our forefathers did, our brothers and sisters. All right? That determines the Sabbath day and also the, the holy days as well. 
Now, let's go ahead to verse 12. We're going to get some more commandments of the 10. Go ahead. Verse 12. Verse 12. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Most High thy power giveth thee. Amen. So it's very important. I don't care what transpired. If you didn't have a dad or you didn't, um, they was, you know, disrespectful to you or however, you know, the case may be. It says, verse 2, honor thy father and thy mother. Why? Why is the Most High asking this of that or requiring this of this? Because if you honor your mom and father on earth, you're honoring the Most High. You see that, my brothers and sisters? All right. That the days may be long upon the land, which the Most High, thy poverty, giveth thee. So your days will be longer if you honor, you reverence. Honor means you reverence. You give respect to your mom and dad, whether you know them or not. If they come into your life later on in life, you respect them. You honor them, my brothers and sisters. This is a commandment. It says that thy days may be long upon the earth. Now, if you're disrespectful to your parents and you're disrespectful to a, a, a father that didn't do what he was supposed to do, and you're disrespectful for that, you're, you're breaking the commandment, my brothers and sisters. I know that they was in error, but you need to cover yourself and be respectful. All right? The scripture, these are the commandments, my brothers and sisters. All right, go ahead with 13. Verse 13, thou shalt not kill. And we all, we all understand that you're not, or should I can write that up? We understand verse 13, we do not take life. We do not take an uh, innocent person's life, my brothers and sisters. That should not kill. That's crystal clear. We are not to take a life. This is the commandment. Go ahead with verse 14. Verse 14. Thou shalt not commit adultery. We understand what adultery means. Uh, let me break it down to make sure. Adultery means when you're married and you go ahead and have sex outside your marriage, whether it's the man that did it, or whether it's the woman that did it. It's, 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 the Most High says that's adultery. So when you're married, that's it. My brother says, once you get married, you are to honor that vow. I, um, of course, there's the law that covers that under the, the civil law for those who do break um, that um, covenant. You know, that's why you, like I said, you don't have to worry about the civil law and the moral law if you just keep the kids. Go ahead, Aqua 15. Verse 15, thou shalt not steal. Now, that talks about do not take anything that does not belong to you. I don't care if it's two cents, three cents, do not steal. If you didn't buy it, do not take it. Now, for example, um, you're going to have a lot of, um, when the riots break off or when it, uh, martial law, you're going to have people trying to break in, take TVs. They did not buy that. I don't care if the store is open. You did not steal. You did not buy that, my brothers and sisters. Understand that. Now, if it's something like water or something, and the, the um, martial law is decreed, and you're starving or something, and you use food in the store, that's, that you're not stealing. That's, you get you something to eat. You get you some water, my brothers and sisters. But when it goes, comes to, like, some... My new, no, that thou shalt not steal. All right. Go ahead, Aqua 16. Verse 16. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. All right. Bear false witness, meaning bring the false accusations to your neighbor. All right. Now, we, um, there are scriptures for that about when you go to a brother, it must be two or three witnesses, and you must have facts. You must have uh, proof, those witnesses. You are not to bring false accusations against thy neighbor. All right, you must do everything according to Scripture. So do not bear false witness against your neighbor. Do not speak falsely against them. Do not spread gossip against them. Do not lie against them. This is a commandment. Go ahead, Aqua 17. Verse 17. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, 
nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor. All right, now, do not covet. Covet means wanting something that does not belong to you, okay? The most high, you got to understand, everything that you need is already, the most high already has for you. So you have no need to desire nothing from no one else. If they get a luxury car or they have a beautiful wife, you do not desire it, as the scripture said. Be, be excited, excited for them, you know. Be grateful, you know. The most high will bless you. So don't covet. Don't be jealous of anybody. Do not desire to have anybody's stuff, okay? The most high will bless you according to his word. You be about your father's business, he's going to take care of you. Matthew 6, 33. So don't worry about no one. Don't covet no one's stuff. Now, these are the Ten Commandments. So, my brothers and sisters, you keep the ten, you do not have to worry about the civil law and the moral law. Now, like I said earlier, you can read those on your own when you get time to get that understanding. Okay? All praise to the Most High or higher. Now, I can, I can have a little bit more time. Let's go ahead. I'm going to go into, before I go into this, you have a lot of Christians. And also, let me just say, I'm not beating up on Christianity because we must understand um, under um, when Christianity came out in Acts chapter 11, that was the disciples, okay, that was preaching the gospel of Christ. That was us, the Hebrews, Israelites. We was called Christians in Antioch in Acts chapter 11. So when you hear me talking about the modern day Christians, they're not keeping. They're, that's another false doctrine. That's not the doctrine of Christ, and they're preaching another God, and it's not Christ, my brothers and sisters. So I'm exposing them. That's why I'm breaking these um, scriptures out so we can have clarity and understanding, my brothers and sisters. Um, I did a lesson on that called "Is Christianity the Gospel?" As you can say, Christ, you can listen to that when you get time. Now. We're going into the book of Acts, chapter 10, and we're going to see how Christians will use this chapter to justify their eating pork, lobster, and shrimp, or anything they want to eat. And this will, they're, they're misconstrued, it's um, misinterpreted. So we're going to expose that spirit this evening. And we're going into Acts, chapter 10, and we're going to go through verses through 1 through 28. And, we're, and they come out with this. They go to this chapter without no understanding, without no precepts, and they try to say you don't have to follow the dietary law. So basically they're saying you don't have to follow the law. So they use this to say, hey, Christ said we can eat whatever we want. is blessed and holy. So I'm going to expose that spirit this evening. So we're going, going into chapter 10, verses 1 through 28. The book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. Verse 2. A devout man and one that feared Ahia with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to Ahia always. Verse 3. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel of the Most High coming in to him and saying unto him, Cornelius, verse 4, and when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before the Most High. Verse 5, And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. Verse 6, he lodges with one Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. Verse 7, and when the angel which spake unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants, and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. Verse 8, and when he had declared all these things unto him, he sent them to Joppa. Verse 9. 
on the morrow as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city. Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. Verse right, 10. So like you're right there. So like you're right there. So we see right here, uh, Cornelius, we see that he was, his nation, he was an Edomite. He was a Italian band. So we understand that other nations is also can receive Christ as well. Okay, not just Israel, but we have to teach the nations. And we see that throughout the scriptures through right now as we're reading. So uh, Cornelius had a dream, and we see that, a vision, okay, that um, Christ is, is, send, is sending him to Peter, which is an Israelite, to bring him the word. And we're going to see that Peter had a dream, and we're going to get clarity and understanding of this dream that Peter had. Because this is what the Christians, the modern-day Christians, would use to justify eating anything they want to eat. Okay? Go ahead. I... Verse 10. And he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance. Verse 11. And saw heaven open and a certain vessel descending unto him, as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners, and let down to the earth. Verse 12, wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. Verse 13, and there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. Verse 14, but Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common, or unclean. All right, so like you right there. So, so like you right there. So we see that the Most High is 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 showing Peter a vision, because we see Cornelius is coming, and throughout the scriptures we're going to see that it was uncommon for uh, any nation to come unto Israel, okay, to even sit with them, to even you know talk with us, and we're going to see that. So the Most High is preparing Peter for Cornelius' arrival. And you got the Christians taking this out of context. They're missing, misinterpreting the word of the Most High. And they're using, they're justifying this verses to say, I can eat anything unclean, uncommon, 440 beasts, or, you know, all these creeping things. I can eat whatever I want to eat because the, the Most High is showing Peter that Cornelius is on his way because Cornelius is a nation outside of Israel. Go ahead, Doc. Verse 15, and the voice spake unto him again the second time, what the Most High hath cleansed, that call not thou common. Verse 16, this was done thrice, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. Now, verse, verse 17, 16, this, so like it right there, right. so we see in verse 16, the Christians use this, what the High hath cleansed, that called not thou common. So they're saying you pray over your food, you can eat anything you want. That's what I heard for 30 years. Just bless your food and have this pork rib. See, <laughs> this is all out of context, my brothers and sisters. All right, go ahead with 17. Verse 17. Now, while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate, verse 18, and called and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, were lodged there. Verse right, 19. Let me, uh, so like it right there. Uh, verse 17. So it says, now while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean. So how could the Christian churches, modern-day Christianity, say that, oh, the most I said, bless my food, when Peter even doubted this dream that he had at first? But they're putting their spin on it. So this is what happens when you don't read and study the word of the most High. You just don't follow what some man on the pulpit says. You must study the word, study to show thyself approved. You must get understanding. You must go precept. Do thy precepts, I get understanding. So we must break the verses down. We must get that understanding, my brothers and sisters. So you got these people, these uh, modern-day Christians talking about 
bless the food. Cleanse it. It's holy. No. Nah. Peter didn't even understand the dream at first. But the most I was going to break it down. Go ahead, Doc. Verse 19. While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Verse 20. Arise, therefore, and get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Verse 21. Then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius and said, Behold, I am he whom ye seek. What is the cause wherefore ye are come? Verse 22. And they said, Cornelius the centurion, a just man, and one that feareth the higher, and of good report among all the nation of the Jews, was warned from the Most High by an holy angel to send for thee into his house and to hear words of thee. Verse 23. Then called he them in and lodged them. And on the morrow, right. Peter went away with them, and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. All right, now, so like right there. So we see what's happening, okay? This is why the Most High dealt with Cornelius through a vision, and then you see the Most High dealt with Peter, all right, my brothers and sisters, to show him the vision, to warn him that Cornelius was coming so he can receive Cornelius. And we're going to be reading that right now. Go ahead, I'll continue. Verse 24, and the morrow after they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them and had called together his kinsmen and near friends. Verse 25, and as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. Verse 26, but Peter took him up, saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. Verse 27, and as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. Verse 28, and he said unto them, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But the Most High hath showed me that I should not call that I should not call any man common or unclean. Oh, oh man! So we see, my brother and sister, that Cornelius was to come to Peter, and that's why Peter had to dream because we just read it right here in verse twenty-eight. It's unlawful for a man that is not a Jew to come in the company. That's why the Most High was showing the four-footed beasts, the creeping things, because that's still unlawful for us, for Israel to eat. And Peter knew that. I mean, the sign you knew that was showing Peter this vision, my brothers and sisters. Let's look at verse 28. And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company. So this is why the Most High was showing um, Peter the divisions of the four-footed beasts and different animals that we cannot eat or come unto one of another nation. Now, Peter grabbed the revelation when he seen Cornelius because he told Cornelius now, but I highly have showed me that I should not call any man. Key word. Now Peter has the revelation and the understanding of that dream. He says, I should not call any man. So it's not talking about I can eat any food I want. I just got to bless it and pray for it. This is what the Christian pastors tell their congregation. I can pray for it and bless it. I can eat this pork chop, or I can eat this shrimp, or I can eat this crab. I just got to pray over it. No, my brothers and sisters. Peter had understanding of it now when Cornelius came. Call any man common or unclean. So this, now you have understanding of what the Most High Word says. You have clarity and understanding. So now when those Christians come to you and try to bring this to you, say, nah. It's talking about any man, not any food. It says any man common or unclean. So it's talking about we are to receive any nation that we go preach the, the gospel to them. We are to preach it to them. They come to us. It's okay. So the most high was letting Peter know, hey, Cornelius, another nation is coming. Preach to him the word. So that's what this chapter is talking about. So now you have understanding. So now you know that we are to follow the, der the dietary law. And 
due to time, I won't have to. I, I'm gonna have to do a part two because um, I got actually another ten, seven to ten more pages. So we're gonna do a part two, and we're gonna um, leave off on this. And I pray, my brothers and sisters, that you have understanding of the Most High's Word, and that you got clarity and understanding of the Ten Commandments, and for us going into the wilderness so we can have, we won't be destroyed. You know, we, we have the laws and the statutes and the commandments in us, and we're going to rehearse it now and prepare ourselves for the wilderness and for the new Jerusalem. So I'm going to give all praise and glory and honor to the Most High Hyder for giving me his word, and also the water for my reader, Deacon Mata Ak, the water for you, brother, and I yield. Hey, uh, the water for that, Deacon uh, Ibod, and thank you, Deacon Mata Ak, once again. This brother's putting in work, both of these brothers, and uh, thank you, brothers. Without you, brothers, man, uh, and myself and Brother Katam, you know, these classes won't be going on, and with the sisters that doing the, the work in the background and announcements, I really appreciate you all, and I'm sure you know we appreciate we appreciate each other. And that was a beautiful lesson, brothers. Always, always the time to read the law and keep us in remembrance of the law, the dietary law, the ceremony law, and the whole law. Period. Like you said, it's 613 laws. This is where the churches get it uh, tripped up at. That oh we can't follow all those laws and this and that. The most I say his commandments is not grievous. So I'm gonna read a couple of scriptures tonight, and I pray that uh, just to tag on to what you read. Uh, hey Deacon Malahat, can you read for me uh, Matthew chapter 22 and start at verse 2 to 14, and just pause for me so I can elaborate, please. Uh, the book of St. Matthew, chapter 22, and verse 2. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son. All right, so this is talking about us going into the kingdom. So Isaiah is giving us a parable here. Go ahead. Verse 3. And sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding. And they would not come. Right, because this was the most high is calling us to do. Come into this wedding. Come into this chamber. Keep these laws, statutes, and commandments. But these servants, the people that know the laws, statutes, and commandments, that should box along you all day, <laughs> now it's time to do the work. And the most high say, come on to this marriage. Come into this wedding. But they will not come. Go ahead. Verse 3, uh, lucky, verse 4, again he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. So these people, he, he is inviting them again. Come on to the marriage. It's time to come. Let's see what happens. Go ahead. Verse 5. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. They were too busy to do the work. They were too busy to come for Christ give them an invitation. Come into my kingdom, which is the marriage. Marriage to Christ. We all got baptized. That's what we did. We got married to Christ. But well, everybody got trapped up in something. One of them said, no, I got to do my farm work. The other said, no, I got to take care of my merchandise. They didn't have time to do the work. Go ahead. Verse 6. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. Right, so they, they even killed the servants. Man, we ain't trying to hear that. Man, we, we're busy. We're busy. Now, remember, they had an invitation to come. But now they turn around and kill them, just like the prophets. They killed us. All day long we killed. Go ahead. Verse 7. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, 
and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. That's your shayya. He come back. He's going to come back and destroy them. These are some of the brothers and sisters that believe. And remember, they was invited. They was keeping the law of the commandments. When it was time to come to the marriage, mm-hmm. they wasn't ready. They had every excuse for not keeping the law of the commandments. So the, when they killed the servants, so you tell you, he destroyed, he destroyed their cities, and he killed them. This is what we all got to watch out for. We got to stay ready. He's going to come like a thief in the night. Go ahead. Verse 8. Then saith he to his servants, the wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. That bid means invited. You say, the one that was invited, they ain't even worthy. Because they didn't endure it to the end. They didn't stay ready. Go ahead. Verse 9. Go ye therefore into the highway, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. Those are brothers and sisters that's out there that's not sure who they are, not sure you take the yoke. To the most likely, he, he works that no man should perish. He said, call them in. The one that was supposed to was invited, they weren't ready. They had every excuse. Oh, I can't do this. I can't do that. I got to do this. Same thing going on today. Let's go, go into the highways and byways. Call the other brothers and sisters in. Go ahead. Verse 10. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both good, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. So they, they came. They came to the wedding. You shall you call them, they answered. Good and bad. Go ahead. Verse 11. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. This guy just freeloading. He's playing church. He wasn't serious. He was just, he just there. His food is there. Oh, according to the kingdom, he's just there. But the most I see everything. That's the king. That's Yeshaya. He sees everything. This guy wasn't ready. He just came. People say they're going to sneak in. Go ahead. Verse 13. Then said the king to the servant, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. He got thrown into the lake of fire. He thought he was going to slip in through the slide, the side door. Those the other brothers and sisters, they go into the highways, get the good and the bad. These people had an interest. The one that was a higher by him, Shias, they always had something to do. So try to go into the highway to get the other one. But this cat tried to creep in. He didn't want nothing to do with the most high throughout his life. He got thrown into the lake of fire. The other one got showed grace. The most high that he shows mercy on whom he wanted to show mercy. Go ahead. Verse 14. For many are called, but few are chosen. Exactly. You see, many are called, but few are chosen. You got to stay ready. Jump down to 35, brother. Verse 35. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying. So these are the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They're trying to tempt Christ. They're trying to tempt Christ because they think they're smarter than Christ. And a lot of people want to try to tempt us. But as long as we stand in the spirit and we read this word, it ain't going to happen. The Christ always was ready for any question. Go ahead. Verse 36. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? So now going back with uh, uh, Deacon Ibar, we're talking about the law tonight. So there's 613 of them. You see, they ask him, what is the greatest commandment in the law? Go ahead. Verse 37. Yeshua said unto him, Thou shalt love the Most High thy power with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. And we know what John 14 and 15 say. If you love me, keep my commandments. He said, you love the Lord thy God 
with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Go ahead. Verse 38. This is the first and great commandment. That is the first and great commandment. Don't put nothing before him. Not your mama, daddy, job, merchandise, whatever. The first thing is your shia. That's the first. Not even yourself. Go ahead. Verse 30, uh, you, verse 39. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. If you love your neighbor as you love yourself, you're not going to steal, kill, commit adultery, none of those things. You're not going to do that to yourself. You don't want no one else doing that to you. These are the greatest, these are the greatest commandments. If you can follow these two commandments, you covered all the commandments. Go ahead. Verse 40. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Those two commandments right there. Read them again, brother, the, uh, 37 and, uh, and uh, 39. Verse 37. Yeshua said unto him, Thou shalt love the Most High thy power with all thy heart and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Verse 38, this is the first and great commandment. Verse 39, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Verse 40. Verse 40, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So you have to go, if you did these two commandments, you cover all the commandments, all the 613 commandments. If you love the Most High and Yeshua, you're going to do what he say. If you love your neighbor as you love yourself, like I said earlier, like the scriptures say, you ain't going to steal, kill. You're not going to hurt yourself. So treat everybody as you want to be treated. But first and foremost, you love the Most High and Yeshua for all your heart and soul and your mind. These are the two great commandments. And well, like you said, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So once again, Deacon Ibad, Deacon Malahat, all the brothers and sisters that took notes and got some understanding, all praises to Ahayu by Shem Yishaya. I yield.